Good evening, everyone. We call the board meeting to order. We'll stand and be led to pledge by Mr. Vesley. Trestle, Inc. 
I've personally seen her involvement in the smallest to the largest of duties, such as spontaneously volunteering to coordinate a children's table for a local organization, to engaging donors for various causes. All of her community efforts do not replace Teresa's additional accomplishment of coordinating student concerts for the Orange County Music Educators Association, New York State Music Educators Association, and countless gallery openings on behalf of art students through Newburgh, throughout Newburgh. So you, you can clearly see through this nomination how easy it was for us to select Teresa as our Arts and Education Award winner. Um, <clears throat> from the Arts Council's perspective, the Arts and Education Award is very special because it recognizes people in our community who see the arts as a way to help our children become good citizens, more creative thinkers, and better problem solvers. And that's certainly good news for the future of our country. The arts help our students learn to express themselves, to work through issues, to appreciate diversity, to find common ground, and to see the best in others. And Orange County needs educators like Teresa who are not afraid to take risks, to give back, and to stand for what they believe in and the Arts Council, of course, is proud to honor her as our 2011 Arts and Education Award winner. I'd like to ask Teresa to join me at the podium. <laughs> you are good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no, it's dangerous. <laughs> You know, yeah, I, I, would I you like to say a few words, or would you I like to sing us a song? Yeah, the only reason <laughs> I forget this is because everyone in this school community continues to support the arts from when I was a teacher through as a director. It's the parents, the students, the board, the administrators, the teachers. It wouldn't happen without the school community working together. So I thank you for your continued support as well. Okay. Congratulations to you. in this district for the past 26 years. We are a diverse district with great schools and great teachers. I have been very proud of the programs offered at the high school where I teach and the job my colleagues do day in and day out. NFA was named the National School of Excellence in 1987. It's not the only one in the district. It offers a very comprehensive education with many, many innovative programs. Our elementary and middle schools also have exemplary programs. Over the past several years, we have seen dramatic changes in our school district. Programs have been cut and educational staff decreased. Many teachers and teaching assistants retired and their positions were not filled. <clears throat> teachers and teaching assistants were laid off. This has led to increased class sizes in our schools and less supervision in our classrooms. This has hurt the education of students in our schools, and we will feel the effect of these decisions for years to come. At what point do we say enough is enough? We cannot continue gutting the educational opportunities for our students. Megan Murphy recently wrote an article in the Times Herald Record where she questioned where the budget cuts would lead. She said, Ample research shows that keeping class sizes small affects student achievement. 
yet the result of New York State's aid slashing has been increasing class sizes throughout our region. If we continue keeping class sizes high, it will be detrimental to student achievement in all grades. Our schools and our children will suffer. Our district has made mistakes in the past with flawed reading and writing programs that hurt student achievement for several years. We cannot afford to make mistakes now by undervaluing the education of our students in the younger grades, they need and deserve smaller class sizes and teaching assistance in the classroom. This is a difficult economic time, but we must make sure that we don't hurt the future of our schools by making more and more cuts. Teachers want to be able to support a bold budget that is good for the education of our students, our schools, and our community. We need the Board of Ed to give us a budget that we can be proud of supporting, one that will not lay off teachers or teaching assistants, one that will work to improve the education of the children in the district and not eliminate programs like full day kindergarten or the essential help of teaching assistants in the classroom. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Klipka. Is there anyone else that would like to speak on agenda items? If so, please step to the podium and give your name and address. Okay, being none, we'll move on. Next item is from the board president. Before I call for a vote on my item, I just would like to make this statement. We thought that it was in the best interest of the district to propose a reduction this year on the number of polling locations as we embark on the implementation of the new electronic voting machines. This proposal <coughs> was based on a cost savings for the district only. It was not proposed with the intent to insult or inconvenience the voters of our school district. The plan was to reduce the polling location in each of the municipalities by one. Upon further consideration, we will maintain the nine locations this year for the May 15, 2012 election and vote and revisit this topic in the future. My resolution is to approve the school and library budget vote election calendar and designation of polling places for the May 15, 2012 vote. Can I have a motion? Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Nancy? Yes. Mr. Rivers? Yes. Mrs. McAfee? Yes. Mrs. Rash? Yes. Mr. Bensley? Yes. Mr. Wedlock? Yes. Ms. Wichek? Yes. Next item on the agenda is from the superintendent. Thank you, Madam President. Resolution A is to, to approve facilities project change orders associated with approved projects. The NFA renovation project NFA Auto Body Project, and HOH Renovation Project, NFA North Campus Music Suite, Technology Room Project, South Middle School Renovation Project, Games Renovation Project, and Meadow Hill School and Temple Hill School Renovation Projects. Can I have a motion? Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Levinson? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mrs. McAfee? Yes. Mr. Rash? Yes. 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 Resolution B is to authorize the board president to execute an agreement with CSR to provide architectural services associated with the exterior concrete repairs at Horizon on a Hudson Magnet School. Can I have a motion? So moved. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Levinson? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. 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 Resolution C is to authorize the board president to execute an agreement with CSR to provide architectural services associated with masonry and steel lintel repairs at Newburgh Free Academy. Can I have a motion? So moved. Okay. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Levinson? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Yes. Mr. Yes. 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 Yes.
Resolution D is to authorize the board president to execute an agreement with Minuta Architecture to provide architectural services associated with additional renovations and HVAC improvements at Foster Town Elementary School. May I have a motion? So, second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. yes. Mrs. McAfee? Yes. Mr. Ratch? Yes. Yes. Mr. Vesley? Yes. Mr. Woodwalk? Yes. Mr. Chair? Yes. yes. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Mr. Pizzo. Our next item on the agenda is the <coughs> Assistant Superintendent for Student Intervention and Support Services. Thank you, Madam President. The next item is the recommendations from the Committee on Special Education. Can I have a motion? Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Nemesis? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mrs. McAfee? Yes. Mr. Rash? Yes. Mr. Vansley? Yes. Mr. Redwell? Yes. Mr. Jack? Yes. yes. Thank you, Madam President. <coughs> Thank you, Dr. Marieta. <coughs> Our next item on the agenda is from the Assistant Superintendent for Curriculum and Instruction. Thank you, Madam President. The first item is a resolution to authorize the Board President to execute the software licensing agreement <coughs> with Elon West Inc. for a license to use the Atlas Curriculum Management System Funding Sources General Fund. May I have a motion? So moved. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mrs. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Rash? Mr. Vasily? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Mr. Chair? Yes. My next item is a resolution to approve the participation of the Foster Town Science Club students to attend an overnight field trip to Black Hawk Forest in Portland, New York from February 4th through the 5th, 2012. Funding source would be the parents. Can I have a motion? Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. My next item is a resolution to approve the participation of the NFA North Campus Peer Leadership Sherpa Group to attend an overnight field trip to Black Rock Forest in Cornwall, New York from February 22nd through the 24th, 2012. Funding source, Sherpa Club Student Activities. Can I have a motion? Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Levinson? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mrs. McAfee? Yes. Mr. Rash? Yes. Mr. Gasly? Yes. Mr. Whittle? Yes. Mr. Jack? Yes. My next item is a resolution to approve the participation of NFA students to attend an overnight field trip to Blacklock Forest in Cornwall, New York from May 18th through the 19th, 2012. Funding <coughs> source is the science department. Can I have a motion? I'll move. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mrs. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Yes. The next item is a resolution to approve the participation of the Foster County School Science Club students to attend an overnight field trip to Camp Harlick in Patterson, New York from June 11th through 13, 2012. Funding source, Science Club, PTC. Can I have a motion? So moved. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mrs. McAfee? Yes. Mrs. Rash? Yes. Mr. Vanson? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Mr. Chuck? Yes. The next item is a resolution to approve conference requests. Can I have a motion? Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mrs. McAfee? Yes. Mr. Rash? Yes. Mr. Vanson? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Mr. Chuck? Yes. That concludes my items, Madam President. Thank you, Mr. Fordham. Our next item on the agenda is from the Assistant Superintendent for Finance. Thank you, Madam President. First item is a resolution to establish finalized non-resident tuition rates for the 2010-2011 school year. I have a motion. Oh. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Levinsky? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. McAfee? Yes. Mr. Rash? Yes. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Item B is a resolution to establish estimated non-resident tuition rates for the 2011-2012 school year. Can I have a motion? No more. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Levinstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mrs. McAfee? Yes. Mr. Rash? Yes. Mr. Vesley? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. 
Item C is a resolution to authorize the board president to execute the 2011-2012 initial contract with Orange Holster Bosies. Can I have a motion? Any questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Levinstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. McAfee? Yes. Mr. Rash? Yes. Mr. Bensley? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Mr. McKinney? Yes. Item D is a resolution to authorize the superintendent of schools to execute an agreement with AmericanProcessServers.com Incorporated to provide process serving services to the district. Can I have a motion? Second. Questions or comments? Mm -hmm. Roll call, please. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mrs. Maxine? Yes. Mr. Bash? Yes. Mr. Bensley? Yes. Mr. Bensley? Yes. Mr. Woodhull? Yes. Mr. Chair? Yes. Item D is a resolution to approve Bid for private and special needs transportation. Can I have a motion? Okay. Questions or comments? <coughs> Roll call, please. Mr. Levinstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mrs. McAfee? Yes. Mr. Rash? Yes. Mr. Bessler? Yes. Mr. Woodhull? Yes. Mr. Chair? Yes. Item F is a resolution to declare books and equipment surplus and obsolete and to authorize the disposal. Can I have a motion? Move. Second. Questions or comments? Roll Yes, Mr. Woodhull. I'd like to take and withdraw the uh, cardiac science automatic external defibrillators uh, from the obsolete list uh, because I believe I have a group uh, at the International Medical Aid Foundation that might be interested in these. Can I have a motion? Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Levinstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mrs. McAfee? Yes. Mr. Rash? Yes. Mr. Bensley? Yes. Mr. Woodhull? Yes. Mr. Bensley? Yes. Item A is a resolution to accept the closing reports. Can I have a motion? Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Levinstein? Yes. Mr. Levinstein? Yes. Mr. McAfee? Yes. Mr. Rash? Yes. Mr. Bensley? Yes. Mr. Woodhull? Yes. Mr. Bensley? Yes. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Mr. Cassell. The next item on the agenda is from the Assistant Superintendent for Human Resources. Thank you, Madam President. On the Human Resources agenda, items A through K, we have on the professional side appointments, change of status, home teacher appointments, return from leave of absence, a leave of absence, retirements, and on the civil service side, we have appointments, change of status, leave of absence, retirements, resignation, and former employees who passed away. May I have a motion? Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Levinstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mrs. McAfee? Yes. Mr. Rash? Yes. Mr. Gensley? Yes. Mr. Gensley? Yes. 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 Resolution L is a resolution to approve the creation of a full-time typist position. Funding source is the Vitaea Carl Perkins Grant. Can I have a motion? Second. <coughs> Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Levinstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mrs. McAfee? Yes. Mr. Rash? Yes. Mr. Bensley? Yes. Mr. Wendell? Yes. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Resolution M is a resolution to approve the appointment of a district hearing officer. Funding source is the fund balance. Can I have a motion? Move. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Levinstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mrs. McAfee? Yes. Mr. Rash? Yes. Mr. Bansley? Yes. Mr. Wendell? Yes. Mr. Chen? Yes. Resolution N is to include the appointment of a school monitor for the 21st Century Under School Program at New York Free Academy J Campus. Funding source is the 21st Century Program. Can I have a motion? Move. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. Bensley? Yes. Mr. Woodhull? Yes. Mr. Bensley? Yes. Mr. Woodhull? Yes. Yes. Resolution O is to approve the appointment of a district guidance liaison. Funding source is the fund balance. May I have a motion? No motion. No. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Levinstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mrs. McAfee? Yes. Mr. Prokash? Yes. 
Stretch? Yes. Mr. Bensley? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Mr. <coughs> yes. Madam President, there's a revised resolution of on the table this evening. Resolution P is the resolution to approve the spring athletic coaching appointment for the 11 12 school year. Do have a motion? So moved. Second. Questions or comments? Ms. Prokash. Yes, uh, I'd like to have this if you could, or what the executive session for the park station. I have a motion to table item P for executive session. Agenda is from the clerk of the board. Thank you, Ms. Kuchek. Uh, for the board's consideration and approval tonight, there are three sets of meeting minutes as follows. The special meeting of January 11, 2012, the regular meeting of December 20, 2011, and the regular meeting of December 29, 2011. Can I have a motion? Second. Questions or comments? Told her to call her. I know. 
he was reported back to the school about this. She called my child requesting for a meeting because this has given out of contact and other named promises. We're coming, I'm sorry, we came and she still is not getting the book. Yeah, because I can't do this. Mm -hmm. I'm going to read it for her. Anybody know me? I'll start from the beginning. This is her mother, Crystal McCullough. She goes to NFA North campus. The problem is, is that as an IEP that was not met at the beginning of September, she was not in the correct classes. And she has not been given <coughs> the proper rules to take her test. Those are all strictly IEPs requirement that was not met. Grades came out and the ball was fumbled and requests for meetings with teachers and administrator, they were said they're setting meetings. This has been since November parent teacher conference. Have yet to have those <coughs> meetings. They gave her two incompletes because they realized that they didn't put her in the proper setting to make up the test, to make up the grades, and gave her two weeks to make the grades up. And also keep the other grades up, which means everything has changed for the next two <coughs> Still no meeting with the teachers because of the hours that they come in and they leave when the kids are dismissed at 3.05 and refuse to stay. Um, <clears throat> the teacher called me, I'm the grandmother, two weeks ago saying that he was told to call me to update me on my granddaughter's um, grade. And I said, well, how can you update me on it when we haven't had a meeting? So again, I called the mother to inform them I had a call. And uh, because Mr. Cabido knew me, because we worked together, that he was going to update me. And I said, you can't update me on something that we have no idea who's our teacher, what's going on, where's the IEP, what's really going on with this child. We're willing to help the district of <coughs> the child if we know what's going on. This is a family effort. We don't leave our kids out. We all work together here. As the mother, grandma, aunt, we hold nine yards. We have emails. Um, I spoke to myself as a co-worker to give the benefit of the doubt that things are going on, you know, um, help me out here, and I gave time. Uh, so we're asking that the district take a look at this issue because she's still failing. Um, and she's trying. Her self-esteem has gone from up here to down here. She doesn't feel that she has an avenue out. There's no help. She's struggling with the math. Um, they won't help her. They got to go home because of the schedule. They have children at home, the teachers, and they can't stay after. Um, it's a hard on everybody, but she needs, she's in the education. She needs the help. Everybody here has gotten her education. She needs our help to get the education. The second part of that is is an outstanding athlete, athlete, I raised athletes. And um, she got on, was chosen for a varsity team in the ninth grade. I didn't want her to go. I wanted her to get JV so she'd get her another year. But the coach said he moved her up. In that time that she moved up, she's been bullied by the coach and by the players. Um, nothing but negative comments are said to her. <coughs> Good girl, why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? Um, I have other parents that come to me. I try to stay in the background. I'm the grandmother. I work here. I'm going to stay back. You guys handle it. You talk to them. Chris was very nervous. This is hard for her. So um, I stood back in the background, like, okay, this is what you need to do. Call. The director, she had a meeting with him Friday, didn't go, go good. My final straw was it when the young ladies went to Austin for a game this past Friday. And they were, the, the gym was full of the spectators for Austin. We had five people there for Newark girls. 
I was on vacation and I drove from all around in there. And our girls were by themselves, the bags was everywhere, and people from the other fans stepping all over their stuff. So I immediately just came behind them, moved their bags on behind them, took two blanches, and I said, You can't sit here. And it was like, Who are you? I said, Well, I'm district security, you can't sit here. And that was it. You can't do that. In the process, me and a couple of parents, because we were the only one there, just kept cheering for the team just as loud as we could. The team was losing because they were playing a D1 school, and it was for competition to see where they were at. But the girls were discouraged in the first quarter, almost like Kingston game, and they started to fall apart. One fouled out before the second half, and um, so he had to put in his second string of girls in and uh, that he normally don't play. And they struggled. He called a timeout, and he began to badger them to tell them that you need to tell your parents to shut up back there. This is my team. And you need to tell them. They don't know what they're talking about as far as this team. And I'm sitting there. And then he starts looking at my granddaughter, and she said, what did you say? And he said, you heard what I said. He said, she says, and he says, you know what? You get out of here. You go sit over there. So she bust out crying, and she went five seats down the bench. And I said, just, just breathe. Just relax. Let it go. And I said, what did he say to you? I already heard. And she told me. I said, just let it go. I'm going to finish this game out. I'm going to cheer for the team, and we're just going to let it go. I stayed through it. I bit my tongue. I didn't say anything to him. But I was going to report it. I have been reporting him to Mr. Major. So this is not new. I have been reporting him and the situation. He curses at the kids. I hear him curse at the kids. I stand over there. Uh, he makes racial remarks to the Latino kids. Uh, it's, it's just horrendous. And I know the district works hard at what you do to try to provide the best for our kids. But the girls are lacking in the professionalism for sports. Sports should be taking just as much effort as you do for the boys, you should do for the girls. They are trying to take. Parents are not, cannot afford to send their kids to college and they're trying to get them through by scholarships and different things. And by having such a person to put their self-esteem down. Half of the team is just unbelievable. <coughs> and some of you guys come to the meetings. I just don't understand that a new person get put in a position and nobody's overseeing that. Nobody's watching. Just leave them to our girls. And I just really, as a, as a person, as those girls at such an age, is why is our girls got a male with them anyway? Why isn't our girls have a female that can relate to them, that can teach them? It's not about just game. It's about all around person. And they're not being taught that. It hasn't been that way in a while. And it's just so discouraging to see that, that you are a community person as I am. <coughs> I work in the community and I groom these kids from Glenn Hines, from Pop Warner, to see them come up to the high school and get discouraged through, through this is just unbelievable. And I just ask that you take a look at these things seriously because it's destroying our future. And our future is not responsible for what happened with those boys who are gone. We got to remember that we got a group of children coming up that is looking for your guidance. Thank you, Mr. McLean, at the end of the meeting, if you could please give your contact information to Mrs. Botsford. This way someone from the district can um, get back to you first thing. And um, Ms. Howard, please be assured that there will be an investigation around the information that you have brought forward to us. Thank you. Next speaker will be Mr. Tirado. How you doing? Uh, I'm Mr. Toronto.
Tanya Newberg. Um, and unfortunately, this is going to tag on to what the two young ladies just mentioned earlier. Um, my daughter is uh, a senior. She plays for NFA Varsity. We moved up here in 2007. Uh, she's been playing ball since 2007. She grew up with two older brothers, so she grew up on the hard top, playing black top basketball, hacking, roughing everybody up, and stuff like that. Ms. Lynch was a savior, Coach Lynch from Heritage. Took her from a black top player to a structured player. So much so that in, I believe it was 2008, they went undefeated. Okay, my daughter had a big part to do with that, along with a bunch of other the girls that are on this team right now. Um, this is really troublesome to me because Coach Santana started this ball rolling. Okay, one game actually came up from the back and almost single-handedly saved the game, 12, 14 points, whatever it was. Santana was impressed, boom, <coughs> scooped up, with like five or six games left in JV to throw her up to varsity. No problem, she didn't want it. She said she wasn't ready, he pulled her up. She rolled the bench for like the first half of the season, he gave her minimal play time. For some reason, to tack onto what she said, males, we do not understand the women. It's just a fact. Okay? And for some reason, Santana had an issue with my daughter's attitude. You tell me of a teenage girl from 13 on to sometimes into their 20s, okay, who don't have an attitude. That, that's, that's in their nature. Okay? So I, I spoke to my daughter, and, you know, we had the conversation, you know. First I spoke to the coach, and I said, which girl do you know on this team that does not have an attitude? Well, you know, it's not just that, you know, it's a team attitude, she's not a team player. My daughter was taught that if you have nothing good to say, don't say anything, okay? So when games, um, things go wrong at a game, or things go wrong in practice, <coughs> and the coaches start yelling and screaming, she knows what should have been done, but she won't say anything. She'll just step back and just let it go. They took that as a disassociation. Like, she doesn't want to be part of the team, she's not a team player, she, this, this, and that. We worked on that. Um, the, the last year, Santana set her out for the majority of the season. I spoke to Mr. Pizzo. Uh, toward the end of the season, he kicked her off the team. And the reason I had to call Mr. Pizzo was because I could not get a meeting with Mr. Townsend or Santana combined to find out why you kicked my daughter off the team. What I got out of that meeting was that apparently he thought that her and another teammate were laughing and giggling at his coaching during the game, and that's the reason he kicked her off the team. He should have coded it and said that she's not a team player, blah, 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 this is not. Long story short, we're this year. Same thing, okay? After leaving that meeting in last year with Mr. Townsend and Coach Santana, I specifically asked him, I do not want this meeting, because the reason that I had to call the superintendent on you to get a meeting, to affect the <coughs> chances of playing ball next year. My daughter loved, loved, I was going to say loves, loved basketball. I'll get to that in a minute. So, this season comes up. She's picked up for varsity. No problem. They start practicing. She gets no game time the first game. She gets a little bit of game time here and there. No problem. She comes home bumped, bruised, battered from practices. I'm like, what's going on? Why are they practicing so hard? Oh, they hacking and this, this, and that. So I told him, you know blacktop, pick it up a little bit. They hack you, you hack back. She goes in, she does the aggressive part of, you know, for lack of a better word, retaliation, you know what I'm saying, for the ones who were hacking at her and stuff like that. She comes home the next day with a letter threatening to kick her off the team for her behavior that day. So I asked her, did the other girls get a letter? When you were coming home with a a bruise under your eye, black and bruise on your arms because they're giving you elbows, tripping her up, stomping on her feet so she could trip and fall. I said, did you come home with a, did they go home with a letter? And she goes, no, no problem. This coach does not have a cell phone. I don't know what age he thinks he's in, but I, there's five and six year olds walking around with cell phones. This man has no contact information. I approached him, I said, we need to talk because apparently in the beginning of the season, a couple of parents jumped on his neck 
and he, he sent a letter out saying he wanted to speak to no one prior or at the end of any game. Called me up, set up a meeting. He gave me the number to, I believe, his Meadow Hills school that he works at. I get the main number with an answering service, left the message, never heard from him. Okay? Um, in the process, I told Ashley, not kiss butt, but more or less, try to work in to the system that he's trying to put together, let's just say. Okay, if he feels that you're being disassociated or you're not, partake a little more, cheer a little more, she goes in, she starts lifting up her game. Now, <clears throat> she's still getting no game time. I grab in my rocker. Um, before that Rockland incident, she comes home, she, she had a great day of practice. He turns around and says, Ashley, great job. And then shoots a jab at her. What are you trying out for the Puerto Rican Olympics? What's that about? You know what I'm saying? It hit me, but I said, let, let me just relax. I didn't want to believe that an educator would stoop to a level like that to tell a child something like that. My daughter's the only Puerto Rican on the team. Okay, she's the only Hispanic on the team. All right? Not just that, once he did that crack, now all the girls turn around, no, the Special Olympics. So now for the next five minutes, everybody's ragging on her over a stupid comment which he made. Okay? I'm a New York City police officer. I can't get involved in certain things as most people may know. Okay? I'm a proud Puerto Rican. Right? Correct. I was born and raised in America, so I'm American. I come from a very strong Puerto Rican background. Okay? My first instinct was to grab him by the throat and smack him in the mouth. Okay? That's what any parent would do. Right? I let it slide. I let it slide. Then I meet up with him in Rockland after the game, and I, I confront him about setting up a meeting. What's going on? It's been a month. What are we doing? Oh, yes, Mr. Toronto. We're going to set something up. Doing 100% better. I said, but I need to talk to you about my daughter. You need to know who my daughter is. Okay, you can't just see a picture and just assume that she is a certain way. She has my wife's character and my attitude. Unfortunately, my attitude is not that great. You know what I'm saying? I controlled it in the last 20 years with the police department, right? And I can blow up when I have to, but I know how to control myself. So I told him, I said, well, my daughter's this, this, and that. She has this, that. Oh, yes, well, I was married to a Puerto Rican. And, oh, I know how their attitudes can be. You know what I'm saying? With the first comment and with that comment, now it's just leading me to believe there's individuals out there who have a bad relationship, they, they mix up with a different race or whatever it is, it doesn't work out, now they take it out on the race itself. Not just on the women of the race, but on the race itself. That's my impression of what I'm feeling is going on. Only because if she's doing 100% better, why is she getting less and less playtime? Okay? Now, Kingston came along, Unfortunately, what happened happened. She got a concussion in the whole situation. Right? She either caught an elbow or a headbutt over the eye. She said she blacked out for a hot second. I didn't see her fighting or anything, so I know she was breaking up some of the players. I'm assuming an elbow caught her, maybe a headbutt. I don't know. We go to the hospital the next day. She had to be pulled out of school because she wasn't feeling well. She got nauseous. I took this, got a CAT scan. She's good. Mild concussion, no problem. The girl still wanted to go to practice. After all this crap, she still wanted to go to practice and just sit there. You know what I'm saying? She's told me several times she wants to quit. I told her I don't raise quitters. I said, this is a form of adversity. You need to learn how to overcome adversity in life. This is a form of it. And I don't want to be mean to her or anything like that, but I said, stick with it. We're going to make this work, OK? She goes Friday to the Middletown game with one of the teammates turned around and said that um, well, she was supposed to start that day. Conveniently, you know, she had a concussion three days before. She can't play, the doctor says, wait a few days. That was a rumor, I, it was never confirmed. I don't, know, I don't care. <coughs> now, she's back to practice, no problem. I asked her, how's practice going? Good, no problem, still no game time. He would put her in for 36 seconds, 20 seconds in one, in one quarter, 10 seconds the next quarter. She's a senior who got jerked around last year, and he has four freshmen, one of which is this lady's um, child, who he will play before he plays the senior who's been playing ball for the last five years, okay? Then he has the nerve to compare, well, 
he's not as good as I, I won't mention names as this one or as that one. I said no, and neither are any of the other guys. <coughs> but they each have something to bring to the team. You haven't even experienced what my daughter has to bring to the team. She don't. She comes in. If she misses a pass, if she doesn't, you're out. Sit down next. You know what I'm saying? He put her in. This was a just. This was. I was waiting because I knew it was gonna come around. They were up 20-something points, almost 30 points in one game. And he put her in for a quarter and a half. Okay? Um, great, beautiful. She got eight, 12 minutes of play time, whatever it was. Then, no more play time. Okay? I don't want to confront the man because I know, uh, after that meeting on that Saturday, I felt that it was just, for lack of a better word, a stroke job. He just. Want to get me off his back and that's it. Oh, yeah, she'll be fine, no problem. Nothing has happened yet. Okay? A lot more has happened in between there. Other words were said that, you know, statements were made to the fact that it wasn't to but to the whole team that, you know, I wish I had a gun so I could just kill all y'all. Y'all don't know what you're doing. Stupid things. Stupid. Could it be spoken out of anger? Yes, it can. But you don't say that. Okay? At one point, something about you, you girls retarded or something like that. It, he denies it because when the parents confront them, no, oh, no, oh, not me. You know what I'm saying? I'm throwing it out there. I'm not personally. I have not heard it. I have not seen it done. He doesn't let anybody in the practices and stuff like that. So I don't know what's going on. Okay? Comments are made. Silliness is done. He walks by my door. <coughs> he's on the bench. And he'll look out, and then he'll tap somebody else to put him in the game. You know what I'm saying? Um, this last game, he put in for two minutes because. The teammate crossed, they're not supposed to switch their, their bodies, who they're covering. She goes and switches and covers the other girl. The ball gets past the number 14. My daughter manages to see where 14 is, goes to try to block. The girl does, whoo, scores. Two minutes, get out, puts a freshman in. You didn't even give her a chance to warm up. You understand what I'm saying? My, my whole thing is now, I think this is personal, right? In the beginning, I could, last uh, couple of days, yesterday or whatever it was, I came to see if I could speak to Mr. Pizzo and um, he was at a meeting or whatever it was. I sat down with Mr. Major today for like 30 minutes, and I told him straight up. I said, I'm sorry I went to the top, but I don't trust anybody. I don't trust anybody. To me, maybe it's my police mentality or whatever it is, I think this is a result, a direct result of what went on last year, okay? And if they could put her on the team and just let her ride the bench, don't worry about it, because you can't tell me that a coach who just comes into this district or co just comes into coaching in this school is not going to confer with the prior coach to find out one, oh, how's this player? How's that player? How's this player? You understand what I'm saying? And I'm sure Santana threw it out there. Oh, watch this one. Myself. It's all speculation, and I hate to speak speculation, but that's what I'm feeling right now. My daughter's a senior, and she, 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 turned, she turned after the Arsenal game when uh, he put her in in the last six minutes because they were being beaten by like 90 to 40. You know what I'm saying? Because it was the last resort. Everybody went in for the whole game, and she was the last resort. <coughs> Mind you, Kanisha, who got fouled out in the beginning of the, the, in, the, in the first half, from the beginning of the third quarter, we could see from across, put Bomba, they called my daughter Bomba. Put Bomba in, put Bomba in, and he ignored her. Fourth quarter comes around, she's literally pulling on his shirt. Put in. Okay? She's in for six minutes. By the time my daughter finishes those six minutes, she's come back more red and more sweaty than most of the girls that want that team. On um, both teams. Okay? A family in front. They're like, where did they have you? Why was he keeping you on the bench? Your defense was outstanding. You kept that girl, the number two, who kept hitting the three-point boom. You kept her down to like one shot out of the four that she tried to take. I said, yeah, that's what I would like to know. I would like to know well, now what needs to be done. There's only like five games left. The way the girls are playing right now, everybody... I'm convinced this guy's the same as Santana. The girls are playing great because they hated Santana. Okay, it was a, it was, there was just a, a hate in there in that team against this man that they wouldn't play proper for. Here, three girls on the team are controlling the team. They tell him who to play. They tell him what to do, and I, I think that's unjust. Right? If you're if you're the coach, you control your players. I know I'm dragging, and I'm very sorry, for but this is, this has been building up since November. You know what I'm saying? And I'm trying to be cordial. I'm trying to be proper. Other parents yell and scream at him. They keep their, t their players on the thing. The players who scream at him, certain ones, because they're his star players, 
They don't get penalized, they don't get sent home, they don't get benched or anything like that. My daughter, who can, if she wants to, open her mouth and let you know how she feels, but because she was raised to be respectful to adults, she's holding it back and holding it back. She told me after the last game, she's like, Dad, don't even mention basketball in college. She goes, I'm disgusted and I hate it. Okay, this is a girl who's been playing basketball since she was like 12, 13 years old, if not younger. So I need to speak to someone or somebody, you know, I know Mr. Um, Major's trying to help out, but we didn't have enough time to talk together today. I told him I'd call him tomorrow, but there's only five games left, and the way they're going, they're definitely going to be in the sectionals. And there's no reason why my daughter shouldn't have fair play time. Right. Thank you, Mr. Tirado. Uh, please, uh, again, at the end of the meeting, if you could give your contact information to Mrs. Boxford. I will. Uh, this way, someone can contact you. Um, as I stated before, the superintendent has assured me that there will be an investigation uh, based on the information that's been brought forward this evening. <coughs> Certainly the behavior that was described here this evening is not something that any of us condone or any of us, it's completely unacceptable. It is, and not, not a lot of families have money. I spent $500 this summer trying to get her more structure <coughs> from the lack of structure from that time, and that money wasted because she can't even show what she's done. Thank, thank you. I appreciate any help. Thank you. Next, we'll hear from uh, Grace Bowles. Good evening. Grace Bowles. Uh, I have one thing to say. Cultural no diversity workshops. Well, I find myself here again. This reminds me of how comedians are supplied with material day after day, week after week, and in this case, month after month. You really make it easy for me. I'm going to start with the ultimate insult to the African American community. During the month of January, there is usually some type of program in the school celebrating the legacy of Martin Luther King. And then there is the final program at NFA involving the school and community. Not this year. Usually the district sends a representative from the school district to the Christian Ministerial Fellowship Celebration uh, program. Not this year. You have really shown how you feel about the African American community. We have really disrespected the African-American community. After all these years, you don't see a need to assign a person to continue with the school community celebrations. This is the ultimate in disrespect. Then you disrespect the NAACP, the oldest and most influential African-American civil rights organization, by replacing a meeting set up months in advance with a meeting of a dog and pony show for the various community groups who do not have a clue about educating our kids. What do they know about AYP? What do they know about desegregating data? What do they know about the duties of an executive principal? You ask them what is the job of a principal and they'll tell you they're in charge of the school. Yes, that's exactly what they were when I was in school, when Mr. Pisa was in school, when Judy was in school. <laughs> we, didn't need, we didn't need educational leaders at that time. But this is what we need now. So what do they know about policy and procedure? Board members and administrators don't even know the policy and procedures of the district. After a recent <coughs> incident at NFA, the absent acting principal had to find out what the policy was before making a decision. So what do they know? I know some of these people, and they are good people. They have, the con they have concerns because of what they read in the newspaper. And above all, these people love to feel important. And you really made them feel that way, using taxpayers' money riding around and serving lunch. But you know, they know only what you tell them. In the scheme of things, they don't know how or what you show them fit into the bigger picture of a failing district. Did you give them the breakdown of failure amongst the African-American and Hispanic students? 
Did you give them the breakdown of suspensions like minority students in honor classes and how minority parents have to do battle to get their kids into honor and the baccalaureate program down at Horizon Hudson? Did you tell them that there are 68 African American teachers out of 1,029 at 7%? Did you tell them that there are 13 African American administrators out of 49, that's 27%? Did you tell them that there are 129 Hispanic teachers out of 1029, that's 13%. But Hispanics make up 41% of the district teachers. <coughs> Did you tell them while the combined enrollment of the African American and Hispanic students is 70%, they are only 30% of the employees in these two areas? Did you tell them that there are many students at NFA who have no books because teachers don't want to bother with collecting books? So they make up paper packets that fit the region's exam, so it comes down to teaching to the test. Did you tell them that there are average students without books, but honor students with nooks? For those who don't know what nooks are, there are electronic tablets, okay? <laughs> So the average students don't have any books, but the honor students have nooks. And board members have iPads. Why do you have an iPad? I bet most of you don't even know how to use an iPad. Probably your grandchildren are using it, maybe a relative, your children. Yes, honor students have the latest technology, but the average student cannot have books. I'm begging you, please get to the high school and find out why students have to have paper packets rather than books. You can have books, but you can also have paper packets. How can you not be concerned about this? How can you as superintendent not go to NFA and check this out when you know that according to what you and the curriculum and instruction committee approved, there should be books up there? We would have, okay. I've talked about this for three months. I don't know how much longer I can talk about it. This just shows continuing disrespect for people of this district. Next, I would like to, for you to tell me when and at what meeting you decided on the criteria for the selection committee and who will be the members on the selection committee for the executive principal. I had been to the personnel committee meeting and there was no discussion at that meeting. There is an open law on the books. But this just goes to the lack of respect you have for concerned citizens. You're going to do what you want to do without regard to community requests. I did hear a parent tell me that she was asked to be on the committee. But after she insisted that you solve a problem, she got a phone call stating that <coughs> There were too many community members on the committee, so she was no longer needed. Suddenly, the committee didn't need her. Well, because of your track record, if it was legitimate, well, we have our suspicions. You asked the parent to be on a selection committee for the executive principal, but when she wrote to you with a situation about her daughter, suddenly the committee was on overload. Why her? Couldn't you have found someone else? Do you see why there's distrust Anyone who can speak for themselves and willingly expresses an opinion, you have no need for these people. You like yes people. Do you know that people who walk to the tune of a different drummer have much to offer? And oftentimes, these people are the most successful. Next, we get back to the, uh, the, basket, the basketball game has not gone away, by the way. The more things change, the more they say the same. A basketball player would not do his work, and the teacher refused to give in. Well, the parent and principal got together and decided it was the best interest of that student to be moved out of his, uh, their class. So you may have set up some rules, but they are not being followed because there are still people who think they don't have to follow the rules. Also, several basketball players were released from the team because they were failing or not attending class, and that's rightly so. But what is in place for these students?
to make sure that they don't become another dropout statistic. Now, to summarize what I just said, the disrespect of the community for lack of a Martin Luther King program, your disrespect for changing the purpose of the meeting with the NAACP, your disrespect for making decisions behind closed doors about that uh, executive principal's position. You disrespect our students because by giving them paper packets rather than books, it's not all teachers now. It also <coughs> dumbing down what these students are taught because they only learn what is in the packet. I wonder what would happen if students who are low achievers were given the same technology as honor students or board members. Basketball players on and off the team need mentoring, and you won't even approve that. Several retired coaches have come forward. They just, to, they just want to help the black males. Volunteers are all over in many, many schools. Uh, they're retired teachers, they're parents with enormous amounts of education who are going into these schools, and they're trying to help these students. Yet, you turn your back on people who actually want to come in, people that retire from this district that want to come in and help. But, last but not least to the Board of Education, I say, the reason why this district is such a, a mess is because the one time that you could have made a meaningful change, you did not make it. You wanted to continue the little voice system that keeps outsiders out. <coughs> um, how dare you allow yourself not to hire a 21st century educational leader? And you know what? But I'm not placing all the blame on you because I just wish more community members were here so I could tell them where they fall short. They're just taking advantage of, you're taking advantage of a community that's asleep. And when it comes to educating their child, and until the community wakes up, they deserve what they get. You come out they came out with that principal that had been wronged, yet they do not come out and fight for their children when their children need a textbook. Figure that out. I can. But I do want to thank you for one thing. I want to thank you for not pull, uh, changing that polling place that would uh, be telling the minority community our votes don't matter. Can you see a person who has always voted at first Montgomery Street School and Horizon on the Hudson without transportation? trying to get to NFA, this would come under the banner of disenfranchising. So thanks for realizing that that would have been a major mistake. And thank you for listening. Oh, and by the way, Mr. Bowles was the only person that could teach female basketball players. <laughs> yes, he could. Thank you, um, Mr. Bowles. I'm just going to... Uh, make a few very brief comments um, about a couple of things that you said. Um, if, if, um, if you had joined that um, very effective and productive community meeting um, that was hosted, um, you would have been very well informed as to um, the cultural awareness training that has been ongoing for the last several years in this district. Um, you also would have been very pleased to know that all of that information that you shared about disproportionality was shared with every member of the community. So I really do wish that you were there because I think you would have found that information very valuable. And um, we were including the community because we need your help. We're here to educate these kids and we need to work together. I am done with this community being divided, and I don't appreciate any groups that want to come in and try to divide and conquer. We're here for all students, and, and, and part of a, a mission statement of a, a group that you're you know, familiar with and associated with is to ensure political, educational, social, and economic equality and rights of all persons, not a particular segment of a community. 
So I wish that you had attended that meeting. As far as the celebrations, the district never hosted per se themselves anything around Martin Luther King. We always participated in um, a, a presentation that was done and held at NFA. That was not our Orange County Civil Rights. That was not our decision not to host that. And certainly if it was hosted, the district would have been well represented as it has been in the past. And in regards to the criteria for the selection committee, this board made a decision to have a group, CASDA, come in and they are running the whole show in regards to um, the interview process and the selection committee and the, we simply approved a criteria and a job description for an executive principal and we are waiting for them to follow the process. We're expecting their expertise and then a recommendation will be brought forward to us based on the criteria that we have set forward. And in regards to people coming in and working with our students, I'm sure that um, you are very well aware that safety is primary concern to everyone in the district. And I'm sure that um, that could be discussed, but we can't let just anyone into our buildings and working with our students. So I do appreciate your sharing of the information, and I do hope that you will choose to participate in the future in community meetings because I think you will find a lot of the answers that you've been looking for and I think that you will be very pleased with what you hear. So thank you for your comments. Is there anyone else that would like to speak on non-agenda items? Please step to the podium and give your name and address. Hey, good evening. My name is Bill Davis. I'm a fish from New York. I have two children that attend Fish and Dunn School. I probably look familiar to you since I spoke before this board at your August, your September, and your October meetings. I hope everyone had a joyful and safe holiday season. I come before you tonight to bring you up to date on what has and has not happened. First, we still do not have a correct IESP for my children going back to the May 2011 CSE meeting. There have been many attempts by the district to produce them, but each time the document is produced, we find ourselves in the position of having to proofread it and then corresponding with the special ed department to correct the numerous factual errors and omissions. Each IESP requires a two or three page letter of requested corrections be sent. The result is a month or two wait to receive yet another attempt at a correct IESP, which then requires more proofreading and more corrections being requested. There have been many meetings held, but to date, no correct and therefore no valid IESP exists. Second, we have not been allowed to view our building's <coughs> files despite a formal request in October, 109 days ago. This despite being at a CSE meeting, which was canceled due to Newberg failing to invite the appropriate participants, and having an hour of time, the file sitting there on the table, but apparently there's a rule that an administrator needs to be there. 109 days is well over the maximum 45 days, which is allowed by law. Our request to see the file was no more nefarious than just wanting to ensure that all pertinent information was in the file so that the educational professionals that would be determining services listed in the ISP for our children would have the information to make an informed decision. Returning to the elusive IESPs. We have been more than patient regarding the situation, mainly due to the fact that our daughter is receiving appropriate services at Bishop Dunn, despite Newberg's inability to properly document it. The most recent document was hand-delivered to our residence across the river this past Saturday by a gentleman who stated he had paperwork from the superintendent's office. A side note here is the U.S. mail gets the stuff to us fine and for a fraction of the cost that it cost the, new, uh, the taxpayers in Newburgh. And I'm sure that the people in the special ed department can attest to the fact that when we get paperwork, we do respond. Special ed was also told that we're only a phone call away and we can stop by and pick things up. This latest attempt at a proper IESP apparently was a response to our requested corrections to a draft IESP. The November CSE, and some of you here may know the three times of the charm scheduling dilemma, 
The first attempt at a CSE, Newberg failed to invite the proper participants. The second attempt, they forgot to invite us. The third time is a charm. Well, the November 18th CSE yielded a December 6th draft, which was quickly responded to, and then a drastically reworded January 27th document, which changed many of the things, but not necessarily what needed to be changed. During this time frame, we also got a letter requesting that we confirm and reconsider our defining of a service resource room, which was stated as, quote, a necessary and appropriate component and was recommended by the CSE. The ironic thing is, one, resource room was never discussed at any CSE meeting, and it's not a component of the service plan. And two, if it was, as the author stated, such a concern, why did he or she wait over two months from the time he or she learned of it to correspond with us? I say he or she because there was a signature at the bottom, but there was no clarification. So we really don't know who sent it. We, as we always do, responded, and we responded, and some of you in the room were CC'd on this letter, so that we were relatively confident that we were responding to the correct party. I can only guess that we did, although we have not received a response from Newberg to the requested answers to our questions. Wow. On another side note regarding the taxpayers in Newberg, the multiple meetings and numerous staff hours spent one badly written and wrong attempt to successfully, uh, uh, for an IEP, was supposedly had two CSE chairs spend eight hours each going over it. This is really a waste of the taxpayers' money, especially since a perfectly good IEP was in place for my home district, and the net effect is that any expense for services is reimbursed for my district. All this is but a quick snapshot of our dealings with your district. Today, we did call and request to meet, we, we, we did place a call to the district and requested to meet with some of the decision makers involved, or who should be involved, and we look forward to receiving the opportunity to meet so that we can finally correct the situation. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Do we have your contact information, Mr. Davis? I, yes, we do. tend to think so. I mean, we'll okay. see you know. okay. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Davis. Do you have any other comments on non-agenda items? Seeing none, be it resolved that the board hereby recesses into executive session for the following purpose. To discuss the employment history of particular individuals and the employment history of particular corporations or firms. The board may take further action after the executive session. Can I have a motion? Thank you. We're, re we're reconvened. Um, who's bringing forth the first resolution? Okay, Mr. Pizzo. Okay, first resolution is be it resolved upon recommendation of the superintendent of schools that the Board of Education hereby terminates with convenience the services of the Palumbo Group as construction manager in connection with the completion of the District $68 million district-wide facilities improvement projects and the $8.5 million athletic improvement projects and directs the district clerk to send a copy of this resolution to the Palumbo Group, January 31st, 2012. The motion. So barely. Second. Okay. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, questions or comments? Oh, well. sorry. Can I have a motion to add the resolution to the agenda? So, so moved. moved. Second. <laughs> Roll call. Mr. Levitstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mrs. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Brokaw? Yes. Ms. Rash? Yes. Mr. Vesley? Yes. Mr. Woodhull? Yep. Ms. Lucha? Yes. Can I have a motion on the resolution that the superintendent just read? So moved. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Levinstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mrs. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokash? No. Ms. Rash? Yes. Mr. Vesley? Yes. Mr. Woodhull? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. Madam President, we need a resolution to remove from the table resolution 0131128. Thank you. 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 Th
Can I have a motion to remove that resolution from the table? So moved. Second. Roll call, please. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mrs. McAfee? Yes. Mr. Prakash? Yes. Mr. Brash? Yes. Mr. Vesley? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Mr. Chair? Yes. We're going to take resolution P in two separate sections. Um, so the first resolution is to approve the following um, numbers that are listed for resolution P. Numbers 1 through 5, 7 through 9, 12 through 14, 17, 20, 20, 21, 22, 23, and 24. I have a motion. So moved. Second. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mrs. McAfee? Yes. Mr. Crash? Yes. Mr. Rash? Yes. Mr. Vesley? Yes. Mr. Wetland? Yes. Mr. Check? Abstain. And then a uh, resolution or the next item would be to vote on. Um, number 18 on um, resolution I have a motion? So moved. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? No. Mrs. McAfee? No. Ms. Carcrash? No. Ms. Rash? No. Mr. Vesley? No. Mr. Woodhull? No. Ms. Kuchak? No. Madam President, there are two other resolutions that need to be added to the, the agenda. One to approve the comprehensive education plans and one facility use request. Can I have a motion to add two items to the agenda? So Second. Roll call, please. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. McAfee? Yes. Mr. Carcars? Yes. Mr. Rash? Yes. Mr. Vesley? Yes. Mr. Woodhull? Yes. Mr. Woodhull? Yes. First resolution be it resolved that the New Bergen Large City School District Board of Education hereby approves the comprehensive education plans 2011-2012 for the schools as listed. I have a motion. So moved. Second. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mrs. McAfee? Yes. Mrs. Brokash? Yes. Mrs. Rash? Yes. Mr. Vesley? Yes. Mr. Woodhull? Yes. Mr. Chick? Yes. Next resolution is a facility use request to the New Windsor Cornwall Road Report. Can I have a motion? So moved. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mrs. McAfee? Yes. Mrs. Brokash? Yes. Mrs. Rash? Yes. Mr. Vesley? Yes. Mr. Woodhull? Yes. Mr. Woodhull? Yes. Mr. Woodhull? Yes. Can I have a motion to adjourn the Board of Education meeting? So moved. moved. Second. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? <laughs> Oh, 11.30. Thank you, everyone. Woo. A lot of discussion tonight. Rough today. A rough meeting today.